that's specifically about love, hate, tragedy. Was that a hard album for you guys to write because of, of sort of the uh, uh, perceptions of Papa Roach at that time? No, and, we're and I mean just how big the band was to follow it up. I mean, was was there pressure there? I think we had no idea how where we were in the music business. You know, we were just like. We had no clue, you know, we just took the rocket ship ride to the top and we we're at the top and we we're just like, this is how it's supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and uh, so when we went in to make the record, we actually did a lot of writing uh, on the road while we were out on OzFest and uh, we had a studio on the back of one of the tour buses and that was cool, man. It was just being creative all the time, you know, and so when we went in to do the second record, we worked with Brennan O'Brien, which was somebody that we always wanted to work with. You know, he engineered a Blood Sugar Sex Magic Red Hot Chili Peppers, one of our, one of our favorite records of all time. Also produced uh, uh, all the Stone Temple Pilots material, you know, so great producer, went in and just let it fly, you know, I mean, that's how we've always made records. We never really thought about, you know, what was going to happen or what the consequences were, what, you know, what, where you were going to go. It's just like, this is what we're in a band for, is to be creative and make music that reflects our lives. And uh, Love, Hate, Tragedy turned out to be a really dark record, you know, because me personally, I was like, in the, I was at the, at the, going towards the bottom of like my progressive alcoholic lifestyle, you know, and so it was a very dark record. Um, <clears throat> at that time, also like, um, I mean, you were saying like you guys were kids, well, you know, early 20s or yeah. 20s, right, when you guys first yep. hit, hit it, hit it huge, and um, I wondered like. What was it like when you guys like, like you were playing with Eminem and oh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it was awesome. Limp Bizkit, like these bands at the time were huge, especially Eminem. Like that must have been a, a definite trip, you know? Yeah, it was a great. Those were both great tours. We did a uh, Anger Management one and two, and had a blast on those on the road out there, man. I mean, what kind of things did you guys learn as a band? Like how did that change you guys? Uh, you must have picked up some stuff. We learned how to party really fucking hard. <laughs> we learned how to take drugs. We learned how to you know, just destroy ourselves and destroy everything around us and have fun at the same time, you know, and rolling with Eminem was a blast. I mean, that, that, that dude's a cool character, one of the best MCs in the business and, you know, so very inspiring guy and we actually go back recently, been listening to like some of the old Eminem cuts and we're like, man, that motherfucker's on to something, man, he's a badass. So I'm excited about his new release, man, I think it's going to be good, you know? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a long time to hear, and it's exciting to hear music from him, but, you know, we learned a lot about ourselves, you know? And uh, I think uh, getting on the stage every night and doing that, that was gratifying. You know, that's what it was all about, was just getting on stage and ripping it. And we did. We tore it up every night. So uh, now you guys are, you just played Crew Fest, like you were saying, with Motley yeah. Crew, which has got to be huge for you guys. Yeah, right? that was awesome. Um, you know, musically, I, I, I would even say that you guys sort of, you know, I mean, obviously you used to rap back in the day. And then uh, now I would say, you know, the new album, or at least Lifeline and uh, Hollywood Horror, they sort of have a Motley Crew sort of feel to it. This sort of a uh, rock and roll, arena rock uh, sort of anthem. For us, uh, I'd say over the like the last uh, since getting away with murder, Paramore sessions and Metamorphosis, we've really been fine searching for our voice as a rock band, you know. And uh, for us, it's it's about sing-alongs, you know. We want people because that, that's our that's where we shine the best is when we perform live. And so we wanted to make a record that really translated well in an arena. You know, how do we make a record, you know, so it's like big sing-alongs, big anthems, big hooks, big guitar riffs. You know, it's funny because we kept joking. We were like, we want to make music that you can't play in clubs anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> really? Because we, I mean, we play, we've been, I mean, we've been a band for 16 years. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and the goal for us is to do a headlining arena tour worldwide. You know, that's like, that's the next step for Papa Roach. You know, I mean, we've headline arenas and we've done that, you know, and so we wanted to make a record that, sounded big you know and uh, especially with lifeline just the sound of that guitar hook is just massive you know and for us that that translates really well live even hollywood horror or um what else we've we been playing change or die like the first cut of the record you know we wanted to make just a song that was like slashing faces just in your face pummeling rock and roll anthem you know and even on the intro of the record like something that got the crowd pumped up you know we thought about the live show when we made this record and the way that we sequenced it and stuff like that so there, there was a lot going into it you know and I'm just rambling now but you know <laughs> well I mean it's interesting because I wonder like you've got serious pipes and I wondered how you connect with that guy that's like way at the back 
at like the top of the stadium, like in the rafters. Yeah, because I was the guy in the back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was up there and I was watching shows and. You know, also I think that like a goal for Papa Roach is like we want to make a club feel like an arena and, a re and an arena feel like a club. And for us, that's like I make a stroll through the arena every night, you know, at least once when I'm singing a song and I get up in the rafters, I get up in the audience and I sing with the people, you know. And I want to I want to make it personal. You know, I want everybody to just feel like it's time to lose your mind when you come to a Papa Roach show. Like no reservations, get down and let it all out, you know, because that's what I did at rock and roll shows, you know, it's like going to see, for instance, like Deftones in a small club and just flipping out and just like leaving that place drenched in sweat with a cut above my eye and just going, I just had the time of my life, you know, yeah. and I'm screaming and singing and flipping out and stage diving and crowd surfing and, you know, because I was that kid, you know, I think that's how, that's how we connect, you know. Adrenaline Deftones? Uh, yes, <laughs> even before that, before they even cut that record, we used to go see him at the Cattle Club in Sacramento or... Wow. We actually got to open for him a few times before they You're killing you know, right got now, signed. Dude. That was like one of the bands that I used to go see that I was like, that we, when we were coming up in the early 90s, you know, 93, 94, 95, I'd go see those guys and I'm like, man, it was so inspiring, you know. Definitely a, an influential band on our career. Okay, well, we're talking about Deftones and how, you know, they personally connected to you as a band. And one of the things I think about Papa Roach is that uh, fans seem to really have a connection with you guys, especially like the lyrical content. Yeah. And, um, Okay, so you mentioned Deftones. What are uh, five other bands? Yeah. Well, I will say four other bands that kids out there need to check out that all oh, have man. that same sort of connection. I mean, for me, I definitely connect with Social Distortion. Um, there's a record in particular, White Light, White Heat, White Trash, that just speaks to me, you know, or Refused, uh, The Shape of Punk to Come. That's another record. I think it's a really timely record right now because I think the banks need to be burned to the ground, you know, and... Uh, also, uh, shoot, what are some other records? I mean, obviously kids know about Green Day. They're so massively popular. There's a band from Germany, uh, one of my favorite rock and roll bands. They're called the Beat Stakes. And uh, yeah, they're like, they're seriously, I think one of the best bands of our generation. I freaking love them. And uh, shoot, Tony Palermo's old band, 10 Foot Pole. <laughs> 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 Never mind, don't check them out. Um, <laughs> Dude, who else, man? Um, let me think real quick. This, this is what's off the top of my brain. What have I been listening to lately? You know, we've been listening to a lot of old school vinyl, too. A lot of old Led Zeppelin, obviously. I mean, kids know about that band. Pink Floyd, you know I mean? Yeah. We're really keeping it classic with the music that we've been listening to because we carry a vinyl uh, record player out on the road with us in our dressing room, so we're always vinyl shopping and listening to the classics. Right on. Cool. Right on, Thanks man. Thanks a lot, bro. Thanks for having me. Thank you.